is carried. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Great. Um, okay. Thank you, Russell, for that. Uh, thank, you. thank you. Right, Paul, do you want to come and do the capital report? Thank you. Good morning. Um, just a couple of points I wanted to raise on the capital program report. Um, the draft long-term plan, now that it's been approved to go out for consultation, has been loaded, so the numbers that now report being reported are against the draft LTP. Um, that has fixed a number of the financial issues, particularly on the watch list, but there are still some projects that will need further consideration as part of the LTP. They particularly sit in the transport space around South Express, Norwest Arc and Northern Line. Those projects are still financially at risk in terms of not having enough, potentially not having enough budget. So that will be for further discussion as part of the LTP. Um, the other thing is, is that the forecast has still uh, remained pretty strong since October, November this year. So there's not been a lot of change. It's only moved about, uh, it's gone up slightly this month, uh, $2 million. Um, and we've just changed slightly the presentation on page 47 in terms of how we present that forecast. Um, instead of having the two forecast lines, we've just got the one line with the X towards the end on the right where we think that line will end up at the end of the year. Uh, there's only about less than a 4% difference between where that line is now and where we think it will end up at the end of the year. So that's meaning that we're probably going to be looking at about a 96% spend against budget for the year. Um, March has been a particularly strong month and means that the overall the quarter has been pretty strong. Um, and the other thing is the we still have got work to do and the next month's report will include the changes in the transport programme that are part of the, the transport choices changes that we've got to make. So that will be part of next month's report. We'll have that finalised and bring it up as part of, or bring it as part of next month's report. And that's pretty much all I had to. Thanks very much for that. It's a really good report. I just had one question, and it might be a transport one, so we may need to take it away. It was just page 70. In the financial status of Takaha Streets is at risk, it says, in terms of being orange. Yes. And I wasn't sure why that was. So it may not be a question you can answer now, but we'll need to get um, we'll need to get advice on that. And if you can answer it now, even, even come up to the table. Yep. Hello. Um, so we put in a submission to NZTA for funding. Um, that was considered at their April meeting, I think it was April the 5th, um, and they declined to make a decision and they've deferred it to October. Right, so what does that do in terms of the programme? <laughs> um, we are still working through the tender process, so that's coming towards an end. Um, our sense is that if we want to deliver the streets in line with the stadium, we probably need to start before a decision is made from NZTA. Right, and so if it was, when was it declined? Um, it wasn't declined. Oh, they've, sorry, not declined. They've deferred. deferred yeah. They've deferred it to their October meeting. Yeah. So it'll be considered under the new GPS. Right. Okay. Okay. So at what point will council make a decision on? Um, I mean, in terms of the funding, because it was, you know, as you'll be aware, contentious. We're going to have to come back to you on that. Um, there is a memo that's been written. I don't know whether it's got to you yet, but right. um, there is a memo written to. You to, haven't to seen about it yet, but okay. So uh, it probably hasn't okay. got to you yet, but yep. Yeah. Okay, so that will, but there will be a decision making process. I think there there will have to be. So council, the, yeah, yeah, given the quantum and, and yeah. that risk. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Hey, thank you for that. That appreciate you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we'll go. Yeah, Pauline, and then Sarah, yeah. and then Yanni. Yeah. Thanks, Jacob. Um, just on page forty nine, it mentions seven oh seven four two Innes Road Street renewal, yeah. um, and there's a variance of three point four million to the budget. Is that a budget? Increase or is that just a timing variance on delivery? And if you can't answer that, uh, off the top don't... of my head, I don't know. There's a change request for in its road. Oh, yeah, that was yeah. There is a, there is a budget increase, um, which is being. I think I think it's coming to you later on. Is it? Yes. Right. And and what do you mean later on? In the PX part of this meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 
um, Kelly the Another transport one. It's not a. It's a, It's more of a Windsor report coming. The Northwest Arc was mentioned earlier. We've got massive um, escalation of prices generally, just construction escalation, those kind of things. When's the report coming on the, deci the decision on the design for that section of Northwest Arc around Island Aurangi? Um, this is the the part that was the under the notice of motion yeah. section. Um, I'm not sure. There's there's again a, there's a memo that's come through me on its way to you, and I don't know whether that's made it to you yet. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, Kelly, then Yanni, then Celeste, then Tyrone. Yeah, unfortunately, this is a sort of a transport related question as well. I'm not sure that you'd be able to answer it, Jacob, but it's around. Uh, bottom of page 46, the resealing program and the um, the new techniques being used. I'm seeing a lot of that around where I live, and I'm I'm really interested in hearing back uh, at some stage on how much uh, you think that we'd be able to to save. Um, I think probably Steve Guy's probably. The yeah, I was going to say you're better. Yeah, yeah. can you Steve Guy to answer that? Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, just uh, um, Hallsville Junction Road is, is flagged as uh, red um, and uh, apparently Kiwi Rail um, again. Um, so can, can someone just explain what those additional costs are and if we're going to redesign the project or what we're doing to, um, you know, value engineer, uh, rescope to make sure that we can finish that project? Appreciate if you can't answer that today as well. I was going to say, from our perspective, there's very little ability to rescope at this point. We've built the the link up to the railway on both sides, and now we're effectively just waiting for QRL to build their section in the middle. Yeah. Is it on this one, Mark? Yeah. Do we know? Oh, hang on. No. Sorry. Do we yeah. do we know when the TBC Kiwi Rail have indicated they have a significant cost increase? Details TBC. Um, in terms of timing, I can't remember when the block of line is booked for. Um, right. We can come back to you. But is that a cost that's coming onto us? Yes. So Kiwi yeah. Rail increased the cost. We're paying for it, and it's, it's just tough biscuits. And um, pretty much, yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Can I just ask, in terms of the watch lists, like um, uh, two two things. One is the the wastewater treatment plant r repair and the um, organics plant move. Um, are we able to add those to the watch list so that we can get visibility? I mean, they're two of the kind of biggest projects in the East at the moment that people are worried about in my community. It, I'm just wondering how we can get greater visibility of progress towards uh, the expenditure and, and the progress on those two. That is a decision for the committee to yeah. add, add or... I think what would be... But can I flag that a, a resolution to... Them yeah, what, what I'd quite what I'd quite like is I'm I'm not certainly not opposed to it at all, Yanni. I think it's it's a good point. I just can we just can you can we take it as an action that we have a chat about it, and then we add it in if we think it's and if not we'll, we can do it at a vote at the next meeting. I just don't want to put the team. I'm just conscious of the the changes in the team, and I don't want to put them on the spot now. So um, Paul, you and me can have a chat about yep, that afterwards. That's fine. Yep. Cool. Thank you. Um, is that it, Yanni? Yep. Cool. Thanks, man. Um, Celeste. Another transport one. Um, <clears throat> I'm just trying to get my head around the the reporting on things between that were in surf, got pulled out of surf, put back in surf. So the project specifically is 26601, the MCR to New Brighton. So that was put back in surf this year. Yeah. Um, what, what page are you on, Celeste? Is it? I've just got a screenshot here of it. Uh, Sorry, I'll just pull that back up. That was, that's the one that deferred for transport choices, wasn't it? And then, right. and then that it's was one of the seven that we brought back this year. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and then the... So it says it's on track and there's money... So is there currently planning underway this financial year? Because yeah. it says there is, but yeah. there is. Okay, yeah. great. Um, okay, so that's... Because there is a bit of confusion around that particular project because you've got the proposal in the draft long-term plan, which pushes planning out to FY29, but we're actually doing planning at the moment. Uh, so I'm, in the draft, proposed draft, it's right. got it completely different if you look up the tool. So I think there's some confusion as to where that pro program is. I understand there's a difference between current and proposed, right. but I think it would. I was told that this capital program would be updated to reflect what's actually happening. So... Might be one to take. Yeah, yeah I, I think that's one to take. Fine, yeah. yeah. 
moved yeah. around so many times. And the other one is for Brent. It's around the stormwater stuff. Last time the question was, I understand there's a lot of challenges with the consenting and that's just changed, which is great. And we, we were asking for a bit more information about the program of work because some of those projects have had quite significant, uh, I don't know if it's scope changes, but there's been some, there's a lack of detail about where the work's actually at. So are we able to get some more feedback on that at some point soon? This is in terms of the OIRC yeah. total. I, I, yep. I suggest that we work with parks on that and get a comprehensive program back to you. Yeah, so that would be potentially in the next finance and performance meeting. Be good to get that sooner rather than later as part of the long-term plan. An update on that. Sure. Is that something you can just take offline? Yeah, yeah maybe we'll take it offline. Yep. I'll have a chat too. Thanks. Uh, cool. Thanks, Lise. Uh, Tyrone. Kia ora. Um, just looking at the slide on page 47, which is the capital delivery for this year. So, I mean, that's all good. We're all on track and sort of gunning for, um, was it four, 486? So, looking at looking ahead to next year, what we're proposing in our capital program is an increase of about 15% in, in expenditure. So, you know, 50, we'll call that 15% increase in output. Is that achievable? We believe the current program that was put forward as part of the draft plan is achievable, yes. Yeah. What are the what are the assumptions that we're making about the labour market and uh, you know supply of materials and all that sort of stuff that will enable us to increase our output by fifteen percent year on year? Because well, that hasn't been done since the earthquake. We still have the risk of supply chain that we cannot control completely. But in terms of internal resource, we think there's enough. We've got enough, and there's enough capacity in the market to deliver the program that we currently have in the draft plan for next year. And we've, we're well advanced in the planning, as Peter outlined in his report, that a lot of the planning for next year has already been completed so that we're ready to go once we get the, the plan signed off and as part of the LTP. I'll leave it there for now. Sorry, what's that? <laughs> no, no, so Melanie? I think we started. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, this is transport too. <laughs> Um, the Lincoln Road, um, it, it, Ina talks about um, one property left to resolve. Do you know if that's a, like, do we have the funding sorted off? Is that all sorted for that? It's just. For Lincoln Road? Yeah. Um, there's budget available. I'm not sure exactly what the, the latest estimate is for it, but um, I, nothing's been flagged to me just at the minute. Would it be okay for something to go back to the community board about this? It might be quite good yeah. to talk to the yeah, board about can. it. Yeah, the inaction you can take. Yeah, yep, yeah, we cool. can we can come and do an information session. Thank you. I think, uh, you're good, Mel. Yep, uh, Mark. Thank you. Um, just circling back to the um, Halls Junction Road extension, um, are we engaging at high levels with Kiwi Rail to express our dissatisfaction at the escalation in, in pricing? And it's, I mean, no surprise, but it's just it seems like it's. Yes, and, and sorry, so I probably should have added to the answer before, which is probably a little bit short and pithy. Um, there is a element of negotiation about the um, increase. They recognise that they're putting in place um, a signalling system, I understand, that, that is pretty new to New Zealand. Um, so they are willing to take on some of the additional cost for that. Um, but a lot of it does pass through us under the agreements that we have to work on their network. So... Um, yeah, we, we are negotiating with the uh, we are working with them, we are trying to manage that, but yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, it just um, amazes me that we almost have a blank check for Kiwi Rail and what they decide they want to do. And um, I just like, you know, perhaps at a high level, management wise, we have some discussions as to how unacceptable that is as a risk mm -hmm. for council yep. to have that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. Uh, I've got Aaron, Andre, and then Yanni again, and then we'll try and move. On. Yeah, I've, I've got one and then um, I'll be one that I'm going to back up Andre on in his because we discussed it. But I'll page 69 first, the um, uh, wheels to wings. So we're now at 50% of our budget. We've spent 300000 in the last month. What would that be on? That's $75,000 a week. In the last month? Um I'd need to come back to you, but I suspect it's the investigations work that's going on. 
along Hayward Road. Oh, so the cost of that split between projects that may benefit from it. Um, when we do the MCRs, the cost for design goes into section one. Um, so section one picks up a bigger chunk of the cost than the right. following sections. Right. So so because it's a mainly a water pipe investigation, does the costs of that get split? Like the investigation, say it's half a million, some gets chunked on here, some goes on the water pipe, or does it all get put on one? It will get split. I don't know how that split okay, happens right. without coming back to you with more detail. That's okay. Cool. Okay. Uh, Andre and then Yanni, and then I'm keen to move us on. Andre? Thank you. Uh, am I just able to ask how far advanced the cutting of my house building renewals? It's a, it's a project, 11.7 million, which for perspective is. What page are you on, Andre? 72. 72. 72. Thank you. <coughs> cutting my house building renewals. It's, I, I, I recall us deciding to proceed, I believe last year, I believe that was before a potential rates rise figure of 80% was put in front of us, as I remember it. Uh, it would be good to know how far advanced this project is. But I can the provide design and costings have been, are being done now, yep. or have been done, but it hasn't gone to market from a construction point of view. So I think we've got Just, Rutledge. Yeah, uh, further to that, it's yeah. going through its final gateway review, yep. um, and it's about to be released to market. Okay. For construction. Okay. And it, well, is this something we would consider putting a pause on, or are we able to? It, in the context of our long-term plan, it would be good to understand this is a priority. I guess that would... Um, you'd have to consider the context of what pause means and... Yeah, 100%, um, yeah. No more than any other project would be my sort of initial response because I'm not quite sure. I mean, if you're asking, can we operate without um, completing the project? Mm. Um, we have limitations. We, cl we have to close the building on a reasonably frequent basis if there's um, various things like significant wind, ev wind events. Yep. Um, so yes, we, we could pause the project. It will mean that we continue to deliver uh, an intermittent level of service. Mm. Um, the financial value of um, <coughs> pausing um, would need to be carefully considered yeah, in terms yeah. of the cost to the rate payer. Understood. Yeah. yeah. So I guess that, that I, guess, so I guess just I'm trying to it, 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 is the long term plan too late to be looking at whether this project is mm. should be viable going ahead because it would have already gone out for tender between now and then. I guess that's, it's just that's probably a question for Peter Ryan who I think has left the room. Oh, no, oh, oh, no, there he is <laughs> hiding in the back. Because yep. Andre, effectively, what you're saying is maybe get something to council on a decision on whether to pause it or not. Well, yeah, and, and, and maybe something to take offline. I'm just, I'm just curious to know if the long-term plan is too late for this yep. to be looked at if we're looking. Yeah. Um, I'm not altogether clear on the implications of it in, in terms yep. of, of understanding can we fit it into the final LTP in the next, you know, it's weeks before the final lands, mm. um, or is it something that needs more work than that mm -hmm. um rather than make a decision off the hip i'd, I'd rather get my head around it oh, sure. and, and yeah. provide good advice yep. rather than fast advice yep mm. so do you want do you want something what about if we got a memo circulated yeah and then yeah. if you wanted to progress something you could talk to the chief executive about what a paper yeah. would like well it feels like this is something we should be considering in the context of the long-term plan is but if it's too late, then we can't. So, including whether it would re require its own consultation, it's a considerable sum. Yeah, then yeah. that's specifically what I was alluding to. So maybe we just why don't we get a memo and then we take it from there? Sounds good. Yeah, cool. Thank you. So, can you, Andrew, is that okay to to do? Yeah. So, Sam, it's scheduled to go out for contract in May. That's why. Um, yeah. So we'll, uh, we can get a memo relatively quickly. I yeah. Thought. That we don't yep. go out before we make a decision on. Yeah. The the, the, I think that's implied in the. Yeah, no. thank you. Yep. Cool. And if it's not, it is now, so that's cool. Uh, right, Yanni, and then we'll move this on. Oh, yeah, um, very quick, simple question. Um, on page 75, um, it says that preliminary route assessment has been undertaken to consider where possible routes could go for the MCR, Otakaro Avon Route 1, Section 1. Um, is that information public? And if not, can it be made public so that the community can see it and elected members as well? Um, 
No, it isn't public yet. Um, it's a high level optioneering report and it requires a bit of work with um, the uh, Otaka Avon River Corridor and various other stakeholders before we can make it public. When will it be released, given that it's informing decisions around the Red Zone and Pages Road Bridge, which are currently underway? Um, for Pages Road, um, all we're trying to do is um, not preclude the options. So all we're doing, trying to do is future-proof it. We're not trying to build it effectively. Um, so we're looking at the options in that optioneering report to check that, that the design doesn't preclude those options from being built. Sorry, I'm just... When will it be? When will the root assessments be made public? Um, I mean, that probably goes back to the funding question that was asked by um, Councillor Donovan. So we need to come back on that. Okay. So can we come back on that? Yeah. Yeah. Again, it seems to be like if you go back to that performance report, people understanding, participating in decision making. Yeah. Yep. No. No. Fair point. Okay. Uh, Phil, and then we'll. This up. Okay. Uh, sorry, I'm a wee bit late. This is uh, page seventy-three. It's actually a question for Andrew on the South Shore New Brighton Estuary Edge. Just just so I'm, um, just for everyone out there in TV land, Andrew, we've stopped spending money on design consultants. It's at ECAN now. Is that correct? It's in their ball park. Okay, so we can't do anything else that's in their, in their backyard. Uh, other than prepare to move to market. Thank you. Great, okay. So I'm happy to move this. Andre's happy to, or Aaron's happy to second it. Any discussion? All in favour? Against? That's carried. Thank you. Very motivated for. Okay. Um, 